Right, this is the second video on this question 710. Uh, and what we need to look at here is how to go about drawing that hexagonal part in the center over there. All right, I'm just going to show you what that all looks like. There we go, there's the hexagon. Now, what you need to know about hexagons when they're drawing in isometric is that unlike a hexagon done in a 2D drawing where all the sides are going to be equal and all the angles are going to be equal, in an, an isometric drawing, you'll note that the lengths of the sides are no longer equal. There are some sides that are going to be equal, um, and that I'm going to show you just very quickly over here. You'll note that this hexagonal side over here, that is parallel to that hexagonal side over there, um, which is in the isometric plane, those two sides are going to be equal. But when we come and start looking at these lines over here, note that length over there is much, much longer. That length over there is much, much longer. And this one is drastic. That length over there is much shorter. And that length over there is much shorter. So you need to be aware of that when you're doing, doing an isometric hexagon, that the lengths of sides will obviously change. Also, the angles are no longer those perfect angles over here, um, they have definitely changed. Right, let's have a look at how to go about drawing that. Um, step number one, you are asked over here to show all constructions and auxiliary views. Probably the best thing to do is, before you even start doing all of that drawing, you could have already drawn the auxiliary view somewhere off the drawing somewhere, you get marks for that, so you may as well score those marks. All right, it says that the length of side that you need is a length of 28. So, how do we go about drawing a hexagon? Step number one, I always start with center lines. All right, you'll see why I want to use the center line method, because it is by far the best way of going about drawing these hexagons on a, an isometric view. All right, once I've got that, I'm going to set my pair of compasses to 28 millimeters because I know that the length of the side is the same as the length of the radius. So there I go, I set my pair of compasses to a, a radius of 28 millimeters and I draw a circle over there. You don't need to worry too, too much about trying to make a light or anything like that. All right, once I've got that in place, I can now take my set square and I can use the 60 degree for a line going up there, swing it over for a line going over there. Use the 60 degree over here, a line going over there, draw a line going over there. Right. I want you to note these lines that I'm drawing over here and over here. Note the radius from there to there. That line is not sitting at a tangent to the circle over there. It is very much back from the edge of the circle. Whereas those two corners, they are touching the circle. So be aware of that as we go through this thing as well. All right, next thing that we need to do is to draw those center lines onto the this uh, part over here, it tells us in the drawing that I have got 35 millimeters going from that point to there. And if you do your maths, you'll find that that is 35 millimeters going from there to there as well. Okay, so how do I go about getting the centers of this thing? Well, I, I also know that the distance over here, they tell you is 35 from there to there and 35 from there to there. So in other words, that is a square. Um, two ways of doing it, um, you could just draw diagonal lines going across here um, in order to get that square and to get the center. That's one way of doing it. What I would like to show you is another little trick, which I think is quite useful. If I draw a construction line coming down over here, and I draw a construction line coming across from here, and that intersection over there, I can take a line back and I will have the center mark of that line over there. And I can then take a center line 
across here. Right, and same story over here. If I take a line going across like that, a line going down like that, and a line going back at 30 degrees from where that intersection of those lines are, that will be 35 millimeters there, 35 millimeters there, and I can do center lines going across there. Right, once I've got the center lines in place, all I need to do is to figure out where this hexagon is. You can see from my top view, the corners of this hexagon are in that orientation. So there's a point over there, point over there, going to a straight line over there and a straight line over there. Right, I need to get those two points in place. Where am I going to get that from? Well, if I go to my, um, my center lines over here, where that corner is over there, you'll see it's the same on that side and that side. I can take that and I can place that down on there and I can place that down over there. Right, I want you to watch this very, very carefully. Note that length over there, I am reducing it. Please, it is reduced. It is not a square that you put around a hexagon, it's an oblong, okay, or a rectangle. So there we go, that length over there is not the same as that length over there. I now come to my center, I place that down over there, turn it around, I place that down over there, and now I can draw two construction lines. Construction line over here, and a construction line over there. Note, I said construction lines. I'm now going to go over here and I take this measurement from the center of this line over here. Take that measurement, note it's the center. And I take that over to my drawing over here. And I mark that on there and over there. I can go over here, mark that over there and over there. And I end up with all the corners of my hexagon. There we go. That one I can draw at the 60 degrees. Up there. That one I can draw going up there. And I hook up all of these points that I have just drawn lines to. There we go. That's it. And that's it. Right. Once we've got that, I also note that there's hidden detail going down over here, showing me that this is a hole that goes through this thing. Well, I can drop line a line coming down over there. And I know that the piece of material that I'm going through is that 18 millimeters. I'm going to take that measurement straight off there. I'm going to pop that over there. So I've got a line coming down from that corner, one, two lines going into that corner. There's my third line coming down from there to there. Um, I can straight away say, okay, well, this side needs to drop down 18 millimeters. Well, there's the 18 millimeter mark, and it's going to go across to another line, which I can't see in hidden detail over there. It is also going to go across at this angle over here. I'm just going to drop a line down over there just a construction line, get that lined up with that line over there, hold this ruler down and slide down to that point over there, drawing a line coming across to that line that I just drew down. Now I'll draw a line coming down from that corner over there. And now I need two lines coming into that corner. I need another line that's going to be parallel to that line. Take the set square, place it over there, slide it across, and there we go. We have got our hexa hexagon done perfectly. Um, you could, if you wanted to, you could put a center line that goes up over here. It's not a bad idea just to get into that habit. Certainly with circles, you need those three lines, the X, Y, and Z axis as well. Right, there we go. There's our hexagon done and 710 is completed.